Okay, this video is going to be part two of paintings from the 1800s, and we're talking about uh, paintings from this book right here, Best Christian Art by me, uh, Pete Rogers. Uh, we're going to start on page um, 384, page 384. Um, and this right here is After Church in Latvia by Rosenthal's. And I can tell you, I, we had some kids that went to school uh, that were from Latvia that went to my high school. They're very nice, very good looking too. Uh, here's a nice um, painting of people live, leaving church. And the reason why these artists are painting people going to church or leaving church is because in Christian communities, this used to be a really big thing for the community. I can remember like when I was in junior high, I looked forward and hopefully I'd see this girl I liked at church. <clears throat> it was a social thing to do to go to church as much as religious or anything else. And there was often afterwards going to brunch, you know, as a family or with friends or something, or meeting your friends after church to go play sports or something. It gave society a community. It gave them something in common. Nowadays, what I see is most people don't even talk to each other. Um, back then, you were all kind of the same, from the same community, the same parish, the same whatever, and you uh, had stuff in common with people. When I was a kid growing up, I knew every single one of my neighbors quite well. And I had been in all their houses and I knew them. It's not like that anymore, you know. And I and I didn't, I just walked down the street, knocked on some doors, you know, to play with friends. Okay, so anyways, nice picture of after church in Latvia. Okay, here's the next one. Um, <clears throat> this is the Church of the Holy Trinity in France, uh, Jean Baraud, uh, 1900. In Western Christian societies, people and property are safe. Oh, that's another thing. A lot of people take it for granted. You know, they say, oh, all this multiculturalism nonsense, like all cultures are the same. That is not true. It's pretty much almost just about everybody in the world wants to move to Western Christian societies, okay? And they don't go to other societies because they're not welcome in other societies. Try going to one of these other non-Christian societies. They will tell you, get out, okay? They're, they don't welcome people, okay? And, you know, that's their choice. Maybe that helps them stay where, where they are, and maybe that's what they want. But I'm just saying is, People want to move to Western Christian societies. You don't hear too much about <clears throat> people from Western Christian societies wanting to move back to their society. People will complain about something in a Western Christian society, but they don't want to leave it, okay? Um, so anyways, you people and property uh, are safe relative to other places, you know? You can't even walk down the street in a lot of other areas that are uh, around the world. Does anybody who knows uh, about travel around the world knows that? Okay, here is a painting. This one is the interior of a Catholic cathedral. And I'm showing you this for the contrast by uh, Villamil. It's from 1854. Look at all the beautiful sculpture, the paintings. Uh, there's a synergy to the sculpture and the paintings. They're beautiful. I can remember sitting around in Catholic churches when I was a kid, bored out of my mind, just looking at all the paintings and the statues. And... Uh, that's good. There's a very strong sense of aesthetic Christianity I would call. And now here's a contrast with Protestants. The Protestants went crazy, in my opinion, like the Puritans in England were some of the worst. <clears throat> um, iconoclast fury. They tore down the statues in the previously Catholic churches. They would tear down the paintings. They threw the Celtic crosses into the ocean. I mean, I think that's a little bit insane. They put all this emphasis on reading the Bible, which really doesn't make a lot of sense when most people are illiterate. Um, the statues and the paintings taught the people about Christianity. So, you know, and again, I like the Bishop Barron quote, you know a movement has gone bad when it starts destroying beautiful things. Okay, the next painting is The Wedding Register by Edmund Blair Layton. And again, he's a magnificent painter. Look at this, 1920. There it is. Getting ready to get married. Oh, speaking of getting ready to get married, well, it's not really the place, time and the place here to go from, but I hear so much stuff from young people about the men say they can't find a good woman for a wife, and then the wife's, the women say they can't find a man who wants to date him and marry him. So that'll be a topic for another day in another video, but there's a tremendous number of young people that do not have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a fiance or a husband or a wife that want to. And there's a tremendous off the charts incidence of inability to have a child, infertility, okay? And that's only getting worse and worse. And there's a lot of reasons for that. We're not gonna get into all of it. Uh, here's a nice painting of a, a young married couple and their baby, The Love of the Parents. I love this one by Jean Boulan, 1903. And what I'm trying to say is, mom and dad are the best people in the world for a baby because they love the baby. They will do anything for that baby. And love makes things work. 
Um, and the reason I'm also saying American institutions now, like the schools, the public schools, the, the hospitals, and a lot of other American institutions, they don't work anymore. They stink. They're a joke. Because there's no community, there's no love, there's no Christianity in them, and they're just mediocre game shows, and they, they can't accomplish anything. Okay, and then I'll, you know, people always say, oh, you're joking, you're exaggerating. No, I'm not. Look at it. The cure rate for all these common chronic diseases is zero. Conventional medicine, with all its bluster, it's a joke. It never cures any of these chronic diseases. And the public schools, with all their bluster and technology and nonsense, the teachers, meanwhile, just like the teachers want to help the students, the doctors want to help the patients, but both of them, in a sense, are not allowed to because the healthcare system and the public school system are designed to prevent um, good outcomes, really. I mean, don't get me wrong. The healthcare system is really good at acute care through emergency room. It's really good at some complex things. But in terms of bread and butter stuff that most people have, they're fat, hypertensive, diabetic, et cetera. It doesn't, it's not good for that. So anyways, though, this idea of love makes it work. Yes, that's a key thing for so many things. And, you know, people think science, 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 technology, technology, but you can't have a good institution for something that involves taking care of people unless you care about those people and it runs through the whole institution. Okay, baptism. Uh, the baptism by Julius LeBlanc Stewart from 1892. And it's nice, okay? It's sort of the ceremony that the kids sort of brought into the church. Um, and it's just nice. It's another excuse for the families to get together so the, the kids get to know their cousins. And, you know, you just see one after another beautiful painting like this. Puts a structure to life. Okay, now here's a nice painting of Italian families at a christening by Arturo Ricci, Italian painter from 1910. And I grew up around a lot of Italian families. Super nice, really warm and friendly and good. Uh, those are good days, good memories, okay? And all these family events, I mean, it just runs in their blood to be Catholic, the Italians, and to be warm and friendly and to cook tasty food. Okay, um, oh, here's like a picture of my wife and me. This picture is called The Persistent Reader and His Wife by Laura Teresa Alma Tadema. I think she's the daughter of this famous painter who was real famous for painting stuff about the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans. But this, I'm not joking, this really is like my wife and me. <laughs> Her. Will you stop being such a nerd and fix something around the house? Me. Will you leave me alone? I got a lot of stuff I need to get read here. Okay, here's a nice painting, An Elegant Gathering by Cesare Detti. And what I'm trying to show here is just how beautiful and elegant uh, Europe was in the 1800s. And the sense of the artistic style, the sense of human refinement, and everybody's getting along, and, you know, it's beautiful. Just look at the building, look at the flowers, look at their outfits. They're beautiful, Okay. And, you know, Ayn Rand in her book, The Romantic Manifesto, she said, it's only been, a, you know, a hundred years ago or less, but what people in the 1900s and the, you know, in the 2000s, they don't even realize aesthetically they are light years away from how people were in the 1800s. The 1800s were culturally far superior <laughs> to us nowadays. No comparison. And these paintings reflect that. And I, I think it's good to see it. So, like I said, a poet's more important than a historian because the poet tells you how things ought to be. The historian just tells you how they were. And one can see that there is this elegant uh, cultural thing that we can aspire to, and it's very nice. So, okay, that's it for tonight. Hope you enjoyed that.